Hey, I'm going to kind of show you the update of where I'm at with my bike design. It's going to be a carbon fiber bike. Um, this is my latest version here. The main thing I focused on was this front tube, getting the diameters right, and also keeping them round. I was having a hard time keeping this round, if you kind of look at this. I did a lot of manipulation, and it kind of comes out jaggedy all along here, and it's not a perfect circle. And also, they aren't necessarily the exact diameters that I was wanting for my bike frame. This is this down here should be about two inches, and this is one and three quarters inch. So I kind of, um, I wouldn't say it's a cheat because it took forever, but it did the job. What I ended up doing was making a front tube like this, and then splicing it to here. And I'll kind of just do a quick sloppy job just to kind of show you what I did because it did take me a while to figure it out. Um, created a cylinder, put it on the top line there, um, and then made it two inches in diameter. I don't know why it does that to me when I move it. Oops. Two inches in diameter. Uh, diameter faces, we'll do eight. Um, actually, I think I did four. Four. And then the height, let me just measure on my bike real quick that I'm kind of modeling off of. Is it like 5.8, basically, and the height, and then say OK. And then what I did is I just clicked on the body, hit M for move, just kind of moved it up here, and then angled it. Angle is pretty important on these, so I want to get it as close as I can. Um, you kind of fiddle with it until it looks good. And then another thing I do, like so I can see better, is I would actually point in here and mess with the appearances, kind of scroll through all different kinds, and I ended up choosing this glass. It seems to be a frosted glass, seems to be good enough for what I want, so that way I can like click through it. Um, and then Let's move. So, after I had that where I wanted it, I would actually move it again. This time I would move it an exact amount in the x direction, like, say, 3. That way I can move it back 3 exactly and put it where I want it. Now I can manipulate this too. Um, so, I want to shrink this. So what I do is double-click that edge to grab the whole thing. And then you can scale it like this. And if I want that to be 1.75, you can do the math, 1.75 divided by 2, so 0.875 per so it's 87.5%, so 0.875, and that should give it me 1 and 3 quarters if I did the math right. And I can check here, inspect that spot to that spot, and indeed it is 1.75. Um, you can see here that it's 2 here. All the way down, but I want it to taper from 2 to 1.75 evenly. I don't know of any other better way to do this than to select all these edges and delete them. This is more work than it probably needs to be, but you can see that it makes it easy to taper. I just hit the delete key after I double click selected, also holding shift to do that. And then it's kind of sad, but then I insert the lines back in again. So I did modify, insert edge. Um, and I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five edges total, so one-fifth, fine, we go there. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is I also did a symmetry, so I like to utilize symmetry as much as possible. I did that face, and that face, and that made the symmetry, so whatever I do to one side happens to the other. So, double click this time, modify, um, insert edge here, and then one fifth. I really like how you can just type in equations pretty much anywhere. And then modify, insert edge, uh, one fourth. The thing it does is goofy stuff. It doesn't keep the lines exactly where you say, like you can see here and here when I enter it, it moves them. I don't know why it doesn't go exactly where. Modify, move these a little bit more later. Uh, and negative, what are we 
one third. One more time, modify it to the edge. One half. So now what I'll do is I'll kind of just move these. This is gonna kind of mess with the geometry a little bit. This isn't the best way to do it. Um, but I, w I want to move this edge down. But what you need to do is move it exactly along that line so you can set pivot. You can really set this anywhere for what I'm doing. Um, rotate it and I want the arrow just right along that line. That's not exact, but maybe type in 16 degrees, 17. No. I should hit the check mark, not enter. So let me do that again. Click here. Not everything. Set pivot. Click here. Did I do 17, I think. Don't hit enter. Hit the check mark. That sets your pivot. Now you can move it. So I just want to move this line. Down all the ways, and do the same here. Seventeen degrees. Oops, we're not on degrees yet. I need to set the pivot. Seventeen degrees. Check mark. Move that down. Oh, forgot. This one scales down with that one. So, yeah, this is why it took me forever. I just had to keep trying stuff. But you can keep messing with it and get it good. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to leave it as is. Put a hole basically right in here. So you're going to unweld the edges. Here, here, and here. And symmetry will take care of that. It's kind of weird how when I do it though, for some reason this edge stays here. Even though I clicked on it, but it doesn't really matter. Just click on the edge and hit delete actually. Instead of unwelding it, that worked. Okay, and then do the same thing here. Mold edges, that, that, and that. Okay, and just delete this edge. And there, I got your two holes. Um, and then move the body back three inches, negative. And then now I'm going to work on this body here. So I'm going to actually make this front tube by right clicking here. Selectable, unselectable, so now it's not like getting in my way. But basically, I'm just going to delete all the edges that this body will replace. So I don't need this edge. And then that is Hit delete. There we go. Now, oh, I also had the face up here, the face down here that I want to delete as well. Right click, make that selectable now. Alright, so I'm gonna actually, one thing, one thing I did off screen is I did enable, I toggled between these, you got enable better display which is what I was on. It just makes things render nicer. Um, but I went enable better performance. It just makes things go a little bit faster when it's rendering. So we're going to go and weld vertices. Welding vertices seems to take a lot of CPU power. So that's why I did that. That one. So you can see how it just kind of, and it doesn't look the best, but it kind of has some nice um, automatic transition there. You don't even have to work on that. That's one thing I really like about this modeling. And there you have it. And then, basically all I did is kind of just fine tune things make them look better. So I went to modify and I would move points around. And just kind of mess with stuff until I got it to where I want.
wanted it. I just did a bunch of that until I got to the point where I'm at this frame here. That's essentially how I got that. Um, one question I have, if any of you happen to know, for some reason, when I'm one thing I couldn't modify, so I can grab these points and move them, just as you saw in the other one, but when I do this point, or I think it's this point here, it doesn't move at all. Like I'll drag it, and nothing happens. I'll hit OK. It doesn't move that at all. If you have any pointers on that, that would be great. Thanks for watching.